Hey guys, Moteblocks back with another countdown video. A lot of you have recently been suggesting to me a really interesting video idea, which is the top 10 most forgotten places in RuneScape. That sounds like a pretty sad topic, you know? This immediately stuck out to me and I really wanted to make a video about it, so thank you to those of you who have suggested it. Let's get this countdown started. Number 10, Scape Rune. Ever since random events have become optional, many players just dismiss the random event immediately, which is understandable because they can be very inconvenient when you're in the zone trying to train, but do you guys remember the NPCs involved with them? On the island of Scape Rune, the island in which Bob the Jagex Cat takes you there, where everything is supposedly backwards, there's a woman there who has been stranded there literally forever as Bob's slave. When you talk to her during the random event, you could tell her that you love her and that you wanted her to come back with you. She would always tell you that her place was on the island to your surprise and that your love could never be. Sadly, nowadays, I don't think she gets many visitors anymore. Number 9, the Burthorpe's Games Room. Perhaps years ago, even then, maybe you would see a few players down here in the games room playing board games that you could play down there, but nowadays it mostly just sits empty. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I use one of my games necklaces to teleport there, I'm often just using it as a method of transportation or as a shortcut to get to somewhere else, and I really never even actually think about the games room itself. This makes me kind of feel sad that I always ignore it or don't even acknowledge or appreciate it anymore because it really does help me when I'm trying to get to some place close by near Birthorp. Number 8, McGruber's Wood. A lot of players have completely forgotten about this place. It's used in Treasure Trails, I believe, and it's also associated with the quest's fishing contest in which a player must gather three red vine worms in order to complete the quest, and the quest Plague City, where the players gather berries to make a gas mask from. After you've done these quests, you really have no reason to ever go back to McGruber's Wood, and the area is really just sort of pointless to visit. There's also a fairy ring inside of it, and you can reach this place by entering the code A1S, but really, why would you ever need to? I don't think this place will ever make a reappearance. Number 7, the Combat Training Camp. This is King Lathus's training grounds and can be accessed after the Biohazard Quest, but in all honesty, why would you ever need to go here? The training camp has several level 63 ogres caged, which can be useful if you want to trade range here, and there's also a loose railing on the fence too if you'd like to pick up your arrows, but most players have forgotten all about this due to the camp's remote location. There's also some attackable dummies within the camp, but they really serve almost no purpose either. Ava's attractor won't work here if you do decide to train drains here because of the fence and there's also some beers on the table but other than that this place most definitely is forgotten by many and does not have much to offer. Number 6, Dorgas Khan, the capital city of the Dorgas Shun tribe of goblins that live underground. This was released to players on the 20th of March in 2007 and can be accessed after the completion of the Death to Dorgas Shun quest. This city has a bank, a general store, an anvil and a furnace, but you won't really find many people here. In fact, you'll probably find nobody here. This city was forgotten about a long time ago, probably because it's underground and no other quests have really revealed much about the city, and most players have long forgotten about this city and the goblins it belongs to too. But hey, in the storyline of Death to Dorgashun, the goblins prefer it to be underground and be unnoticed by man. Perhaps it's for the best then. Number 5, Tutorial Island. Don't get me wrong, absolutely every player in RuneScape has once visited this island at one time or another. However, after you're done here, you can never return. It's sort of like the initiation process into RuneScape, but it really does help you for however many more years you plan on playing this game. I sort of like to think of it as all of our players starting out as children and the tutorial island was sort of mother to all of us teaching us how to do some of the most greatest things we will ever achieve in this game. Sadly, not many players have ever rethought about the tutorial island after they leave it, but all of us really do owe a certain amount of gratitude towards it. It was once everyone's welcoming home at one point in time before they decided to leave it. Number 4, The Outpost. Involved with the Making History quest, The Outpost, now discussed by practically nobody, played a very important role in the history of Kent Darwin and the Ardignus line of royalty. It was established around year 30 of the 5th age shortly after the discovery of the rune essence mine by a wizard. It was later on in the 95th year of the 5th age that it was used by a corrupt group of followers of Zamorak who used it as their base and caused chaos in our down. It wasn't until a group of Ceridominists and the Zamorakian religious practicers had what is known as the Great Battle there and that there was peace later on. 
Many years later, King Ulthus, who is known to have formed the Ardown City Council, had his two sons, King Lathus and King Tyrus, split Ardown into what is known as today East and West Ardown. The outpost is so important in the history of the development of Ardown, but sadly nobody remembers this and nobody probably ever will. Number 3. Remington Although this area has a house portal and is involved in a lot of quests like Dragon Slayer in which you have to negotiate your way through Melzar's maze, this town is pretty much forgotten in RuneScape. It's very small, has a general store, crafting supplies store, and even an archery supply store. There's even a yew tree located here, but sadly I assume because there is no bank located in this town itself, it has never really thrived as anything to be of significance to other players. My guess is that this town is just for free players to have and be able to explore in due to the shops located here as well as the free player quest starter NPC located here too for Witch's Potion. This town is a simple town and pretty straightforward and probably will never be much more than just that. Number 2. The Monk Monastery of Edgeville Granted, this monastery is used in a lot of quests like the Great Brain Robbery, Garden of Tranquility, Scorpion Catcher, and the Curse of Zaros mini quest, there isn't much to do here. Back in the day, peers used to train on these monks because of their high HP and low defense, and they never needed food to fight them as the monks could heal you if your HP ever got too low. You can use a combat bracelet to teleport here, or the Lassar teleport on the Ancient Magic spell book, but other than being just that, a method of transportation or a shortcut to get somewhere else, the monastery doesn't have much to offer. And even though peers always killed those monks, they still forgave them and would always heal you anyway. Number 1. The Champion's Challenge Underneath Champion's Guild Not many people have heard of this, especially new players. It's one of RuneScape's best kept secrets. The champions of the races sit amongst themselves down there, silently waiting for their challengers. However, they probably don't get many anymore. It is said to be that its challenge scroll is even more rare nowadays than a clue scroll is from a goblin. It's truly an honor to have defeated a champion, especially if you're able to beat all of them. However, the only reward you get for defeating all of them is a banner to be displayed and a congratulations scroll. This is probably, unfortunately, the most forgotten place in all of RuneScape. That's it for this countdown, if you know what I should be counting down next, post it in the comments and let's make it happen. If I didn't use your suggestion this time, don't worry because I just might in the next video. I save the best suggestions for use later on just so you guys know. Also before this video ends, I'd love to give a huge massive thanks to Wolf for making this awesome banner for me. Check this out, I didn't ask him to do this or anything. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find his YouTube channel. Go tell him that Moak Plock said thank you. This seriously made my day, so thank you Wolf. You're an amazing artiste. <laughs> thank you for watching guys, and I'll talk to you all later.